when maybe people could come and view the animal pens that were on each side. Walk through the bottom yeah. of the ark, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. So Ron used a lot of his own money to do all this work, didn't he? I mean, he would work a month or two, then go overseas for a month or two, is that correct? Uh, he, he did that for a time. There was a time he had, uh, if he wanted more time off, he would have to trade days at work uh, so that he could have more days off together because uh, well, one time he stayed on the job uh, in the delivery area for a week. A week. A week so that he could get three weeks off to go do exploring. Wow. And that didn't sit too well with uh, different, with, I guess, him and others <laughs> until he, uh, well, at one point he was uh, being given donations and some people gave him tithe money and mm -hmm. doctors would give him money, different people would give him money mm -hmm. for making the trips. Mm -hmm. And then at one point he came into some money that he used for trips and then he quit working where I was working, though I was still seeing. I mean, he quit working uh, for the hospital where I was working. Okay. And he would uh, do freelance work, work some at another hospital, just part-time when they needed an extra anesthetist. One hospital after another. Sometimes he'd be working at two or three different, four different hospitals. You know, a little here mm. and a little there. Yeah. And he would... would would work when he wanted to, mm -hmm. so that he was free to go do all this exploring. That was just his life, was, was doing the exploring. Yeah. And he went to country after country. I don't know how many countries he actually did exploring in. I know he did a lot in Egypt, as well as Israel, from one end to the other, mm -hmm. uh, and Jordan and Turkey. So he might made like 130 some odd trips overseas working with the discoveries. That's just amazing. Very so many. he may have spent a million dollars of his own money during this 22 years, dedicating uh, his his life to this. His last 22 probably years, probably at least. Yeah, yeah. Probably more. Yeah, that's amazing. And yes, some critics will say he's into this for fame and money. Oh, no. Money, no, he lost money, you could say, you know, working with the discoveries, but he gained God's favor by this work. There were times oh, when he was over there at, uh, doing the work. Uh, one time, somehow, he lacked $300, having enough to pay his hotel bill. Mm. And mm. someone came to him with three... Uh, they were Torn, damaged. Beat up, hundred dollar hundred dollar bills. bills. Wasn't that amazing? Would you take these home and exchange them for new ones and bring them back to me? And he says, "Yes, I will be glad to." <laughs> and he went and paid his hotel bill. Yeah. And then brought money back to the man. The next the trip. The next trip. Yeah, that's amazing. And there was another time I know he said uh, when he was working out in the wilderness, and I didn't know for a while what he meant. Uh, like I said, he. He explored Israel from one end to the other, and he was working. I don't know. He, he and he found a lot of artifacts and turned them in uh, to the antiquities department uh, and others. Uh, he said that there were places that he worked where he couldn't get good food to eat, and some sometimes he had to work yeah. just with bread and cheese uh, because mm -hmm. he was a vegetarian. There mm -hmm. just was no place else to eat. Yeah. And so it wasn't all honey and roses. Mm. It, he, That's right. He, he really paid. Ron ended up paying with his life. He gave his all. He gave everything he had, everything for this work. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So then <coughs> he talked to you at some point about finding the Ark of the Covenant. What was that like? 
well. He first told me about, he had never talked to me about finding the Ark of the Covenant at the time that he was wanting to find Noah's Ark and the other things. He never mentioned that. In fact, he told me he hadn't even thought of it. And the mm -hmm. first thing was that he was he was sunburned from scuba diving and was walking in the garden tomb and his hand pointed out and said, that's Jeremiah's grotto and the Ark of the Covenant is in there. Mm -hmm. And it was like, mm. you know, why did my mouth say that? That's amazing. He said he hadn't even thought of it. And uh, the person from the antiquities department there said, well, great, you... you uh, excavate and we'll furnish you things mm -hmm. and Ron said uh, that he knew that was supernatural but he didn't know if it was the good or the bad mm -hmm. and then he needed to go home and think about it and, and study up on it he, he said he had no idea why the Ark of the Covenant could possibly be, be in that place that looked like a dump where there were mm -hmm. a couple of dead cats on it. Yep. He said that just was startling to him. He had no idea uh, about that before. So he went home and later went back and started digging. And he and the boys dug and dug. And, uh, and I was wondering what was taking so long and... and why was he spending so much money to go and not and he, he would come back and still hadn't found it trip after mm. trip after trip still hadn't found it but he had interesting things to say and then one day he said Jesslyn I found the hill outside Jerusalem where Jesus was crucified mm. and I thought wonderful yeah and then Another time he said, that he had found the cave, he had found, mm. uh, he said, the Ark of the Covenant is in a cave under the crucifixion site. And mm. I said, what did you come back to work to relieve me for? Why don't you go back and watch <laughs> it? Somebody's going to come and take it over. Yeah. He said, oh, it's well guarded. Sure. Because I had no idea mm -hmm. in my mind. I couldn't picture the right. reality at all. Yeah. And, and then he told me something else, a, a, just a little about it. Uh, he said, I'm not supposed to talk about it. Don't you tell anyone or they'll kill me. Mm. He didn't tell me who they were. Yeah. He said, uh, I've been told that if I tell about it, they would kill me or my family. Mm -hmm. And they have ways of knowing. So don't you tell this. Yeah. And so I didn't for mm -hmm. years. The Israel Antiquities Authority had threatened him not to say where it was. Yeah. So, under a death threat. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, at some point, he talked about the blood on the mercy seat. Do you recall the, the first time you heard about that? That... I will never forget as long as I have breath in my body. Yeah. That affected me so, so much more than anything else I had ever seen, heard, or did in my life. That affected me. Uh, it changed my life. Sure. It, it really did. Because. Mm. That was something that I had wanted to know and could not find out at all. Uh, do you want me to tell anything about that? Or yeah. So what did, what, did he tell you specifically about that? 